Yeah, so be it. Let me hear from Honorable Kira because as you're speaking, mm -hmm. um, in fact, some members of parliament, I'll mention them by name a bit later, have come out in defense of the deputy president saying mm -hmm. all these things you're talking about, him being absent in major events, are all propaganda, speculations, and mm -hmm. some few people trying to fight him as a deputy president in his position. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, the question now is, you see, Limuru 3 just concluded on Friday. Mm -hmm. If you follow closely on Kirwa, because we're going <coughs> in that direction, the names is mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, looking at this particular group of people coming in to um, a point, or if I would use that word, uh, propose that the former president, Uru Kenyatta, is the head of the lead, um, this new coalition, the Haki mm -hmm. uh, a coalition. And I don't know where that place is, Mount Kenya now. In fact, there's another daily here saying what Uhuru camp wants in Mount Kenya, embattled mm -hmm. deputy president and a restless Mount Kenya. So mm -hmm. the first time Mount Kenya is very big on matters politics. You followed the Limuru 3, you, we concluded. Some saying it's more divisive than it is uniting. What would be your remarks this far? Well, it is useful that we have national conversation. I've always maintained that we do not have organic political parties that can uh, stand the test of time. That's why for the last 25 years, every, every formation of every government after five years has been done <coughs> by different political entities, whether it is a coalition, whether it's a political party from the days of now, all the way to the days of Jubilee and in now Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. So we need to have national conversation. It's only that uh, when the people from the mountain come together, many of us almost uh, get worried because we have always assigned them uh, the role of a big brother, uh, perhaps because of their numbers, perhaps because of the central position they control in the country, including part of the economy. But uh, the, the issue is simple. Let us meet as communities, accept that tribalism is really in Kenya. You know, we cannot pretend that we are not tribal. So, but what, when mm. we are tribal, let us manage and uh, allow ourselves to move into vessels that are supposed to transcend the tribe for purposes of creating genuine national unity. But this pretends that uh, there is no tribalism in Kenya. It's something that I cannot uh, uh, take to the bank because there is really tribalism. The second issue is there is trust deficit in Kenya. People don't trust each other. And because there is lack of trust, that's why even the, the constitution that we have is much bigger than the original constitution of 1963. And that of 1963, we almost did amendments as many times as we thought about it. By the time we are promulgating the 2010 constitution, we had done more than 34 amendments to the old constitution. Look at the Constitution of America. It's small, 26 pages, but they have had it for the last 200 years mm. with very few amendments because it's supposed to be the framework. But we almost want to legislate everything. Even the space that I'm occupying, we are almost saying, thou shall allow everybody to breathe free air. So it is, it is <laughs> something that is worrying me. And the second issue... Yes is that the position of the deputy president, I'm not trying to defend it because it is regarding Gashagwa mm -hmm. holding it. That is a constitutional office. And if we are going to spend resources to safeguard that particular office, we must give it some respect and we must protect it from any assault, whether politically or even financially. Just like what we are talking about, uh, the, 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 the resources to the former president, uh, it's the same thing that we, we must safeguard the position of each and every individual as long as we've given them that office. The danger, uh, Doris, yes. is any time there is uh, some kind of misunderstanding between the president and his deputy. We waste a lot of time, we waste a lot of resources because people are no longer consulting. They are actually fighting each other because the last five <coughs> years, we were blaming it on the handshake. But what is very clear is that even before the election of 2018, there was already some kind of some disquiet between the two leaders. And it is after elections that it uh, came full blown that the two are no longer together.
But you see, Honorable Kira, yeah. the Deputy President we are speaking of here, just so of the President, uh, you know, when he's living for America, we all saw that, uh, Barack, you saw. But, but the body language, the body language. Those, body language. those For those objects. students who have, who have read body language, we realize the two yes. were not at best. Absolutely. And just in the same afternoon, the same or the previous afternoon, okay. you no, see, the same afternoon, you see, the, the governor of Nyeri, mm. And that's the you. governor of the deputy president mm. made a very strong statement about the fact that the deputy president is under a lot of assault from the system that he's part of. All right, Barak. Yeah, the problem here, and I think that Honorable Kira